I will hold you, but only for a minute, okay? Okay? Only for a minute. All right, here. Look at the camera. There we go. Yes, there's your face. All right. You good? Can I put you down? All right. Okay, I'm not putting you down. Don't worry. Don't worry. All right. There. Can I put you... All right. No, I'm not. I'll be back. Okay. I think he got enough cuddle, finally. And that was our Audi moment for the day. Well, okay, maybe not. He looks like he's coming back. Yes, he is. Okay. Welcome back to Just Chatting. And this is the series of videos we do on Thursday and Sunday evenings just for our own entertainment and for Audis because clearly he's not going anywhere. So, got a couple of things I want to talk about today. A uh, couple of them are going to go quickly and then we will spend a little time with the main topic. I need that book, just so you know. He doesn't care. All right, when we come back. Okay, why don't we start with Archie types? Yes, there was another episode of Nutmeg's podcast. And this time, she took on another criticism leveled against her. And that is Duchess demanding. And, of course, she says that demanding is synonymous with bitch. I she wouldn't say bitch. The word is in the dictionary. It has been used even in polite society for many, many, many years to describe a female dog. I have no problem with the word. Bitch. Somebody really needs to buy that woman a dictionary. Like, we should take up a collection. I'm serious. Her ignorance is really starting to wear on my nerves. Well, as I say, once again, she is devoting her podcast to fighting back against the criticisms leveled against her. The unspoken B word in this last podcast was bully. And you know what? You can be demanding and not be a bitch. You can be a bully and not be a bitch. You can be a bully and not be demanding. These are not uh, comparable terms. They're, they're not synonymous. They describe a whole bunch of different things, and Lord, the woman needs a dictionary. Oh, and speaking of dictionaries, she went on again about how clever she is, because she watched Jeopardy, and I never thought this could happen. The woman actually made the death. I know he's right behind me. She made the death of Alex Trebek all about her. That, I, I'm still reeling from that one. Yes, when Alex Trebek died, people sent her condolence cards. The scope of this woman's ego is just, it leaves me speechless. And very few things leave me speechless, but nutmeg does. All right, so that's all we're going to deal with, because frankly, these podcasts are getting boring. They are getting, well, they've been boring for a long time, but they're getting redundant. It's same old, same old, again and again, rehashed, different people, same story. So um, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, there is a rumor, I should point this out, there is a rumor that she invited the uh, the Princess of Wales to be on her podcast. I have no idea if, in fact, she did it. She's 
she's crazy enough to do something like that. But of course, anybody who is waiting for Catherine to appear on the podcast, I just hope they're not holding their breath while they are doing it. Because, yeah, odds of that happening are mighty, mighty slim. So I think that's just more nonsense coming out of, you know, the nutmeg camp. Apparently, things have, I, I, I never thought this would be possible. Things have actually gone down. Uh, when Sunshine Sachs was responsible for their publicity, it was tacky, it was trashy, it was over the top, but it's actually getting worse without them. So I don't know what to say. Personally, for me, making these videos, what can I tell you? It's like manna from heaven. All right. I saw something else in the press. I'm just going to throw this out. Um, consider it a teaser. Uh, there was an actor who appeared with Nutmeg in a movie, um, something or other dating guide. I don't know. It's, it wasn't much of a movie. Uh, Christopher Pohala, I will look up the name. And he has a timeline that he has come out with. He knew Nutmeg back in 2016. They were making these movies together. So he knew her. They were in contact. They were texting. And he has a timeline for Nutmeg dumping Corey Vitiello and taking up with Harry that is very different from the standard accepted timeline. So I want to look into that a little more. And frankly, I may not even do this myself. I may just shoot this article over to the Royal Grift because she has already done a very detailed timeline of the beginnings of that relationship. And the truth is she might be able to make more of this than I can. So we'll see where that goes. But just a teaser to throw it out there. There are some serious questions about who was with whom and when and when the relationships ended and how much overlap there may have been. All right. Let's get on to the topic at hand. Jack Royston, that is, he's sort of, you know, Omid Scobie 2.0 for Newsweek. Perhaps the American Omid Scobie. I don't know. He came up with an article, and the headline was uh, Kate uh, Defended Nutmeg. Uh, and her visit to Uvalde. Well, that's not quite what was going on. It's a, sort of a clickbaity title, because when you actually read the article, that's really not what's going on. Catherine said a few Catherine-ish things about Nutmeg going to Uvalde. And when I say Catherine-ish, I, I, I know it's a made-up word. I'm keeping it in my vocabulary because it's, it has a clear meaning for me. Catherine says nice, kind, polite things about people. If you just, if you trotted a till of the hun in front of her, she would probably say, oh, aren't those lovely furs? This is who she is. This is what's going on for her. So, yes, she says nice kind, polite things. The fact that she said something polite about Nutmeg making a visit to Uvalde is not support. It is not defense. It is Catherine being Catherine. But I took a closer look at this article and while well, he's quoting uh, a royal biographer and the biographer is making a comparison between Nutmeg showing up in Uvalde and Catherine having appeared a year earlier in 
a, a vigil. Um, it was a candlelight vigil for a young woman in the UK, in London, who was kidnapped, raped, and murdered by a an active duty metropolitan police officer. So, yeah, someone from Scotland Yard kidnapped her, raped her, killed her. Good news is the guy's in jail. He was hardly a mastermind criminal. They caught him very, very quickly. But there, there's a whole level of scary going on in a situation like this. And for those of us in the U.S., it's important to remember that in the U.K., it's not even legal to carry pepper spray. So we're talking about a population that is completely unarmed. Their defense is totally at the mercy of law enforcement. And when law enforcement screws up, this is going to have a much greater impact on them than it would on us because our population, well, we have the Second Amendment. We are not solely dependent on a police force for our defense. They are. So when the police force or even just a single member of the police force goes rogue, turns on the populace, that's got to be just unspeakably terrifying. Anyway, it's my take on that. They should be allowed to carry pepper spray. It's non-lethal, but they can't. All right. I probably shouldn't have even said that they should. It's their country. They can decide on their own. You know, I don't think I could ever live in the UK because of that, the extent to which they are disarmed. Um, what can I say? I'm too American for that. Moving right along, Catherine showed up at the vigil. And in the article there, quoting, uh, Royston is quoting the biographer Anderson. What's his name? Anderson. I'll look it up for you. And he's quoting him as saying the glaring difference between Megan and Uvalde and Catherine at the vigil is the criticism that was leveled against nutmeg. No, no, honey. The major difference, the glaring difference is nutmeg showed up with a freaking film crew. The pictures we have of Catherine from the vigil. And here are some pictures. Take a look for yourself. This this is representative of the photos. It's not like there are great photos out there and I'm keeping them from you. Oh no, this is what they are. The photos are all clearly amateur cell phone shots. There are no paparazzi photos. In fact, in most of these photos, you can't even see Catherine's face. You can see her face in profile and I think there was one shot where you where you got a you got a good enough look to say I know who that is. The fact is she went out one in her own community. She lives in London. Um, two as a private citizen without uh, an entourage without a Netflix crew. And three she most certainly was criticized for it. She was criticized for not wearing a mask. She was criticized for not socially distancing. She was criticized for getting involved in an event that could be construed as political. So, oh yeah, she was criticized. And that leads me to the next point, which is, no, Nutmeg is not being unreasonably criticized. The UK press has criticized royal brides and to some extent royal girlfriends. It's what they do. 
and they have been downright brutal to some of them. So why don't we just cast back in time? By the way, we're not going back to Wallace Simpson because, frankly, the UK press was kinder to her than the foreign press was. We're just going back to Diana. So, do we remember these photographs? Oh, yeah. She and, and Charles had just started dating, and these photos came out. Now, on one hand, Diana got very, very lucky that the British press did this to her, that they hit her so hard and so fast, because these pictures are, are awful. They are humiliating. And if you look at the clothing she's wearing, that dress, boy, it's practically dragging on the floor. They got her into a bright light she clearly had no idea. The skirt was going to be so translucent in that bright light. If you look at the way she is dressed, there is nothing sexy about that. 100% Sloan. I had seen Mennonite women working in the fields wearing less clothing than she had on that day. On top of it all, she's holding a couple of babies in her arms. And what happened with this, and this was UK Press's opening salvo, is the people of the UK rejected this. It was so over the top. It was clearly taking advantage of a teenager. Keep in mind, she was a teenager. She was 19 at the time, who was naive and innocent, and frankly, painting her up like a Jezebel for the tabloids. As I say, in a way she got lucky. The public reaction to the press for doing this was hostile. So they backed off. That gave Diana enough breathing room to get uh, rolled in to the palace machine so that she could be protected and they could do all that stuff they do that Nutmeg didn't want, you know, protect her from this sort of um, really inappropriate uh, photographs. Uh, this is just, I'm not even sure what people were thinking to do something like this, but they did it. So even Diana, even an innocent 19-year-old girl, holding babies in her arms was going to get slammed by the tabloids. So, no. Nutmeg thinks she's got it bad. Sorry. Wrong. And what happened to Diana? And by the way, this wasn't the only thing. I mean, they, God, they hounded that poor woman, chased her home. Um, and there's film footage of her you know, practically in tears trying to get away from them. That was nothing compared to what they did to Camilla. Now, Camilla had it worse than anyone. Allegedly, Diana called her a Rottweiler. How do we know this? Because, boy, the press picked it up and they ran with it. They had headlines referring to Camilla as the Rottweiler. And I've got a selection of headlines here and caricatures and just take a look. And do keep in mind that even though Camilla was, I, I will say she was a reasonably pretty young woman when she was young, she was no great beauty. And this had to have been extremely hurtful for her, extremely hurtful, because, of course, Diana was a very pretty young woman. And Camilla, Camilla was older and therefore didn't, she wasn't flattered by the comparison, but Rottweiler, Rottweiler, that, that's, 
That is so over the top. It is completely unacceptable. Nutmeg has not been called a Rottweiler. She hasn't been called a Chihuahua. She hasn't been called a Cocker Spaniel. So she really needs to kind of get over this. Catherine, oh my goodness. The tabloids have had a field day with her too. Now, the point of this is that all of these women have been roasted over the coals by the British press. Nutmeg is the only one who seemed to have been expecting it. As she said in that famous Nobody Asked Me If I Was Okay interview, she had been warned by her British friends that the tabloids would roast her over the coals. Was Diana expecting this? No. How could she have been? The last time there had been a royal marriage in the House of Windsor was back in the 50s when the Queen married Philip. She couldn't have been expecting this. Was Camilla expecting it? No, I think she was hoping no one would know that she and Charles were involved. So, Catherine, yes, Catherine was probably expecting this, but the, the extent of the press attacks, probably not. Because she was a very respectable young woman who had kept her nose clean and there were no dirty little secrets to pull out of her closet. Still, they came after her. So what is the difference? Now here's where we come to the ginger sock puppet. Harry has been made aware of this. People will say nutmeg isn't the only one who has been eviscerated by the press. And his response, which I'm sure Nutmeg put in his mouth, is, yeah, but when it's her, it's racist. So that means we have to talk a moment about circular reasoning. Now, in part, talking about circular reasoning is a great deal of fun. The reason why, at least for me, is I love Yogi Berra. I do adore the man. He was brilliant. He was an absolute genius. He also played for the Yankees. I love him so much, I'm even willing to forgive that. Okay? Now, Yogi Berra was the absolute master of circular reasoning. That place is so crowded, nobody goes there anymore. It ain't over till it's over. Yogi Berra, well, he was a Zen master. He really was. Yogi Berra would say these bizarre things. Of course, according to him, I never said half the things I said. This is Harry's problem. Uh, circular reasoning. If it happens to nutmeg, it has to be racist. Why? Because nutmeg is mixed race. Therefore, any criticism directed at her must be racist. If the same criticism is directed at someone else, well, it's not racist because they're not mixed race. Circular reasoning. Now, that's a logical fallacy. We all know this. Harry's not bright enough to figure this out. As far as Harry is concerned, she is mixed race. She has been insulted. Therefore, it must be racist. Racist loquitur. Well, he doesn't say that because he's a sock puppet and he doesn't know what that means. But it really is that clear in his mind. And what we need to pull out of this is the reason it is so clear in his mind is even though the vast majority of the civilized world 
is no longer seeing things through a racist filter. Harry still is. In Harry's mind, it's you're white or you're other. If you're other, everything that happens to you is other. If you're white, nothing that happens to you is other. It's, it's a reflection, frankly, of his own racist thinking. And that's the part we need to keep in mind when we are listening to him. And by the way, we're going to be hearing more of this because he's got that memoir coming out. And he is certainly going to tell us how poor Nutmeg was victimized for being mixed race, like from the moment he met her and blah, 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 blah. It's important for us to remember that he is alone or virtually alone. I can't go so far as to say I do not believe that any criticism of nutmeg is racially motivated. I do believe there, there must be some that is racially motivated, simply because we do not live in a perfect world. We live in a world where people harbor these feelings and it's going to creep out. Not making excuses for this or anything. It is a reality. It is what it is. But is that the reason for all of the criticism? Absolutely not. Is that the reason for most of the criticism? Absolutely not. It's probably a very small minority and not even a very vocal minority because I have rarely seen blatantly racist criticism of her. I have seen some, but the overwhelming majority of the criticisms I have come across have nothing whatsoever to do with what color she is or is not. This is something that Harry is throwing out there simply because this is how he sees the world. For the rest of us, it's an irrelevancy. For Harry, his mother was victimized by the press. Believe me, he's the first one to say that. His mother was victimized by the press. And he won't, he won't say it's because she was a person of color, because of course he can't say that. He does say it's because she was dating a person of color. He's crazy enough to go that far. But the fact is that he can look at that and say, no, it's different with nutmeg because she is a person of color. So despite the fact that the most vilified of the royal wives, and I'm not just going to say in modern memory, because I would say even Wallace Simpson didn't have it as bad as poor Camilla, because she was just crucified by the press. You can't write any of that off to racism. But Harry will still pull back and say, no, it's different with Meghan, because it's racist. Why? No reason other than the fact that she's a person of color. The, literally the same criticism could be applied to Camilla, to Megan, and he's still going to see one as racist because that is how his mind is working. So we need to keep in mind that what we are hearing is coming from the point of view of a man who absolutely sees the world as white or non-white. And this is not a man who can pull out and say, maybe other people look at things differently. So get ready for it because we are already starting to hear this nonsense of nutmeg is vilified and no one else is. No, sorry. Nutmeg was slammed for using Uvalde as a photo op. That's, that 
was why she was criticized. Catherine was criticized for showing up at a vigil because she didn't wear a mask, because she wasn't socially distanced, and because it looked a little too political. Those were the reasons. I don't recall anyone saying that Nutmeg showed up at Uvalde for political purposes, although that may have been a factor somewhere in there. The main criticism was she was exploiting the tragedy for her own self-promotion. No one thought that of Catherine, so I will grant you that was a difference between the two. But once again, Catherine was criticized, and Catherine did not show up with a film crew. So, apples and oranges, and still, Catherine got slammed for it. So, so much for Nutmeg is being singled out for criticism. All right, that's what I have for you today. I have a cat who is curled up behind me sleeping. Yes, he eventually crawled off the chair. Well, he didn't he crawled off the back of the chair and sat down on the seat of the chair to go to sleep. I will see you all next time. We are going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. I think we'll take a look at the Camilla slideshow today because, yeah, I... I mean, I've shown you some lousy pictures of Camilla, so let's take a look at some nice ones on the way out. Have a terrific day. I will see you all next time. Mm -hmm.